Frederick the Great was an 18th century king of Prussia and is considered one of the most effective leaders Europe ever had. He greatly increased Prussia's size and turned it into a military powerhouse. He was also considered one of the best monarchs of the Enlightenment era because of his patronage to the arts and promotion of Enlightenment-style thinking, such as promoting more elements of religious tolerance, creating systems of civil service, and opening the door for people outside of noble birth to have better opportunities than before. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, as Prussia molded itself into the German Empire, Germans were very much in awe of his accomplishments and inspired by his example. Unfortunately, that also included Hitler, which is why Frederick's image after World War II soured for a few decades. But what's fascinating is during the time of the German Empire, Frederick the Great's history was altered when taught, and something very essential to his life was either denied or left out entirely. He was actually quite gay. Very gay. In fact, I would wager he's probably one of the most well-documented and known homosexual figures of the 18th century, if not of all time. But because being homosexual was viewed very negatively in the 1800s and 1900s, this was either struck from the historical record, as it were, or denied as simply being rumors. As time went on, this altered history of Frederick not being gay, but a straight person who didn't like women, was viewed as fact, and it wasn't until more recently that his actual sexuality was rediscovered. Even now, there are historians who deny Frederick's homosexuality despite plenty of accounts, very obvious hints, whether out of bias or falling into the pattern of not accepting anyone as into men unless they 100% come out with a rainbow flag and say it outright. Now, why does this matter? Do we really need a video dedicated to Frederick the Great being gay? How does this change anything he did? Normally, there is some truth that someone's sexuality doesn't in of itself determine the things they do in their life. Alexander the Great was bisexual, and I don't think him being gay or straight instead would have somehow prevented him from conquering Persia. But in the case of Frederick the Great, his sexuality actually made quite a difference in his life, and influenced how he would be king of Prussia. In addition, the fact that societies viewed the man positively, but needed to dismiss his homosexuality to do so, shows the impact his sexuality had to his legacy as well. In biographical history, it's important to understand how a person's experiences and motives altered their decision-making and influenced others. And this is no different, so I'm making a video on it. Happy Pride Month! But first, I'm going to give a shout-out from this video's sponsor, Ridge Wallet. If you want a wallet that's more compact, sleek, and easier to maintain than a standard leather wallet, then Ridge Wallets are the perfect fit for you. You can pick from dozens of designs and keep all of your cards within the wallet in a nice and protected stack. There's also a nice strip on the back for any extra cash you might want to carry. I have one myself and I've enjoyed it thoroughly. If you want one yourself, you can use the code EMPEROR with the link below, so when you get your own Ridge wallet, you'll get it at a 10% discount. It'll be a worthwhile investment, so get a Ridge wallet today. Thanks to Ridge for sponsoring this video. When I said Frederick the Great was one of the most well-documented historical homosexuals of all time, I wasn't exaggerating. We know him so well, we can even correlate his type of men. Frederick's known relationship seemed to be slightly older men who acted more feminine. Was Frederick considered feminine for his time? Well, what one has to understand is that the definition of masculine and feminine has changed over time. Luckily, we actually know quite well what 18th century Prussia considered manly, as they literally had written codes on it. The... oh gosh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce these. Uh, hey, uh, can I get your help? Thanks. The... Hausväterliteratur. And... Jagdliteratur. Meaning Hausfather's literature and hunting literature were whole genres of text used to determine how a male Prussian landowner should properly act. The royal family was included in this class and adhered to many principles in these codes. Many of these make sense for a landowner and involved how to take care of the land, sustain yourself off of it, and support a family with it. And of course, there is emphasis that not only do you need to find fulfillment in landed work, but you also need a woman in your life to stay happy. According to these texts, in terms of character traits, a Prussian man should be patient, well-traveled, well-studied, and well-versed in medicine. With Frederick the Great being known as smart, artistic, and an enlightened king, that overall seems quite fitting for him. So traditional society before Frederick the Great's time wouldn't have considered his personal traits as feminine. 
but strangely, Frederick's father, Frederick William, did. Frederick William saw the arts as very womanly and unbefitting of nobility, and Frederick the Great studying those as a kid didn't make their father-son relationship very happy. In fact, Frederick William's views were what began the shift of Prussia to militarism, as he believed those were more fitting pursuits. Thanks to Frederick William, the shift in, at least, aristocratic circles had changed for his generation. And now, with the study of philosophy and the arts being considered womanly rather than manly, you could make an argument that while growing up, Frederick the Great was considered effeminate, at least by his dad. But traditionally, not really. Regardless, since Frederick the Great would bring back the idea of supporting the arts and studying philosophy as king, he effectively made the generation of his father more of an outlier in the way manliness was perceived. This was a reason later historians would deny Frederick's homosexuality. Due to the stereotype that all gay men are effeminate, they dismissed Frederick the Great's homosexuality as a rumor. Because how could he? He was a manly man who loved the arts, maintained land, and led armies just like, almost, every Prussian king before him. Bashing stereotypes, Frederick was manly, or feminine at times, but alas, very gay. He had several instances of homosexual experiences, which, mixed with his pursuits of the arts as a kid, caused his father to conduct several physical beatings, as that was his preferred punishment to royal disobedience. Okay, you know what? Seeing Frederick William and Frederick the Great's a little bit confusing, so to avoid confusion, I'll refer to them as Frederick William and Prince Frederick while discussing his early life. So what about outright relationships? Well, we do know of two possible ones when he was Prince. When 16 years old, Prince Frederick had a 17-year-old friend named Peter Karl Christoph von Keith, who worked for King Frederick William as a page. They bonded over how much they hated the king and became very intimate. People noted how suspiciously close they were, and eventually word of an act of intimacy they had together managed to spread around the Prussian court. We technically don't fully know if they did have an official secret relationship, but Frederick William suspected it enough to believe the rumors were true, and he had Keith exiled. Prince Frederick was very likely beaten by his father over this as well. When Prince Frederick was 18, he had a relationship with an officer named Hans Hermann von Kott. They were also very suspiciously close and wanted to run away together to England in 1730. Frederick's exiled friend Peter even snuck into Pomerania to try and help them. Man, what a good friend, am I right? Sadly, they were caught in Kustrin, and Peter had to flee to the Netherlands, although Frederick William hung an effigy of him out of spite. Unfortunately, since von Kotz and Frederick the Great were officers in the military, their attempt to flee to England was declared a form of treason. Von Kott was executed, and Prince Frederick's punishment, aside from beating and being stripped of his rank, was being forced to watch his friend and possible lover's execution by beheading. According to witnesses, he fainted right before the sword reached the neck. Frederick William even threatened to force his son to renounce the claim to the throne in favor of his brother, but decided not to as he didn't want to deal with the potential drama that could happen with the Holy Roman Empire's imperial diet. Frederick William furthermore exiled Prince Frederick out of Berlin for forced statecraft studying, and wouldn't let him back until two years later on the condition that he was married to a woman named Elizabeth Christine. That'll put an end to his homosexual behavior for sure. So here we have poor Prince Frederick, only 20 years old, and having gone through his father hating what he enjoyed, forcibly breaking up two relationships that were very likely actual relationships, physically beating him up multiple times for those things, and forcibly exiled from home until he agreed to forcibly marry a random girl. You can imagine how miserable Prince Frederick felt. At the age of 21, he was officially married in 1733, and by that point he was restored to the Prussian army as a colonel, all of this just in time for the War of the Polish Succession, where the prince led his first troops on the battlefield. When he was later on leave from the war, he made a group called the Bayard Order that involved him and his friends basically performing and acting in plays, composing and playing music, and creating other works of art. Prince Frederick, for the first time in a while, felt genuinely happy, although he didn't enjoy his marriage. Aside from, well, being gay and not being attracted to his wife, she was also seen as a symbol of his father forcing his wishes onto his life, so they didn't spend much time together. In 1740, at the age of 28, King Frederick William died, leaving Prince Frederick to finally take the throne and become King Frederick II. As mentioned in the beginning, Frederick the Great was an Enlightenment monarch, 
which includes the idea of putting the subject's overall needs first and being a servant of the state. Frederick himself had been a supporter of this style of rule even as a prince. A year before ascending the throne, Prince Frederick wrote a rebuttal of Machiavelli's book The Prince, a book notable for saying an effective ruler is one who is more feared than loved. While there is an argument that the book was satire or perhaps more of a warning than endorsement, it was still influential among European rulers. So Prince Frederick writing a rebuttal against it was quite a notable thing. He even titled it Anti Machiavel, and I have the link to it in the description in an English translation if you want to read it yourself. I'll sum it up myself by stating one of Frederick's main arguments were, just because some leaders were horrible monsters doesn't mean every effective ruler has to be or should be. Shocking, right? Makes you wonder if maybe his experiences with his father might have inspired this viewpoint a little bit. The arts flourished under Frederick the Great's rule, with the king being a patron of many notable musicians and artists, including the son of Bach, although not Bach himself, even though Bach would end up composing music for Frederick. We also know that the king had collections of art himself, including a lot of homoerotic paintings and statues, in a building on palace grounds that he referred to as, hilariously, the Temple of Friendship. I swear, it's as if Frederick the Great knew of the, quote, and they were only best friends, quote, LGBT history meme before everyone else. Frederick was basically in a unique position where he wasn't really hiding his homosexuality, and everyone in Germany just kind of knew. But because he was an absolute monarch and one of the most powerful men in Europe, no one could really do anything about it. Plus, with Frederick being a very effective leader, there wasn't much to complain about anyway. If there was one thing Frederick the Great did continue from his father's example, however, was militarism. Frederick the Great earned his The Great title after Prussia's participation in the War of the Austrian Succession, which resulted in Prussia greatly expanding in size, population, and resources, mostly thanks to the acquisition of Silesia from Austria. After treaties ended the war in 1745, when Frederick was only 33 years old, he reached the point where people referred to him as Frederick the Great instead of just Frederick II. Then there was the Seven Years' War, which was overall a tie in Europe, but Frederick the Great confirmed his control over Silesia. Sadly, though, during the war his brother, sister, and mother would die, making it a tragic time for him as well. By the end of Frederick's reign, Prussia was a great power, with 86% of its budget going to the military, and 1 out of 28 Prussian men were soldiers. For comparison, only 1 in 310 British men were soldiers at that time. The Marquis de Mirabeau at the time famously stated that Prussia was not a state with an army, so much as an army with a state. Frederick the Great also expanded Prussia even more than before, connecting Brandenburg with Prussia proper through the first partition of Poland. Even in his older age, he participated in the War of Bavarian Succession as well. Okay, so he loved war, he loved the arts, what about other areas? Well, Frederick the Great was notably tolerant of other religions, at least compared to others at the time. But he had his own problems. His view on religious tolerance was more out of practicality to the success of the state rather than out of genuine feelings. For example, while he treated all religions nearly equally under the law and encouraged immigrants of all faiths, he never hired Catholics into higher positions and had a few anti-Semitic viewpoints similar to a lot of Germans at the time. Notably, he wanted to encourage Jewish settlers to remain on the border rather than move to the interior because he was worried they'd be crafty and trick Christian merchants. Yeah, silly, but this is unfortunately how he thought. What about his home life? Well, aside from mastering the flute and supporting the arts, he still continued having gay relationships, even while he was married to his wife, as that was basically for show. His most notable and very likely boyfriend was Michael Gabriel Friedersdorf, his personal valet. I say likely because there is not definitive outright proof, but others alluded to it, especially Voltaire. Voltaire was friends with Frederick the Great and even lived with him for a time. And on Friedersdorf, he said, quote, This soldier, young, handsome, well-made, and who played the flute, served to entertain the prisoner in more than one fashion. While this doesn't have to be interpreted as a sly implication of a relationship where Frederick was very enamored, Voltaire did notably write a lot about Frederick the Great's homosexuality in general during the time they lived together. And even parts of his writings were stolen and republished as a book called The Private Life of King of Prussia in 1784, which Frederick the Great tried to suppress its production in France. And obviously, a relationship outside of his marriage would want to be kept somewhat private like any normal person, so I can't imagine Frederick would outright tell Voltaire. 
but perhaps he was obvious enough to where Voltaire could rightfully speculate. Most historians nowadays seem to agree that it is very likely, especially when Friedersdorf was eventually pressured into marriage in 1754, so he had to let Frederick know. And we have Frederick's response letter. It can definitely be read as upset and almost catty. Have your marriage ceremony today rather than tomorrow if that will contribute to your care and comfort, and if you want to keep a little page and a little scout with you as well, do so. Whoa, Frederick, Jesus, calm down, that was really not called for. So yeah, he was kind of upset. As Frederick got into his old age, he naturally had fewer relationships, at least that we know of. How was the Queen feeling during all of this? Well, she didn't feel respected, as you can imagine. Frederick had so little interest in her that he would spend years away from her at a time. In addition, a lot of the nobility didn't respect her to the point where she'd have to demand the respect herself. However, she did have the respect and love of the public, as she spent a lot of her life finding fulfillment in charity, and also notably rescued many things from Berlin while it was captured temporarily during the Seven Years' War, similar to Dolly Madison with the burning of the White House. The Queen would actually outlive Frederick, as Frederick the Great would die in 1786 at the age of 74. Since he had no son, his nephew Frederick William II would take over. So now that Frederick the Great is dead, let's look a little bit into how historians viewed him. Right off the bat, we have the cover-up of Frederick's homosexuality, as historians cited his doctor, who after his death claimed to dismiss the rumors and defend his reputation against being gay claiming that Frederick the Great was lying to himself that he was impotent due to an operation scarring his, um, region. He even published a whole book claiming this. However, the very surgeon who performed that operation, Gottlieb Engel, immediately disputed this, saying his parts were not deformed and were operating perfectly healthily. Despite this direct correction, a lot of historians still went with it anyway, since homosexuality was viewed that negatively in the 19th century. But there were other theories. Later on, Wolfgang Bergdorf, a German historian of the mid to late 20th century, thought that Frederick didn't love men, he just hated women with super high amounts of disgust. Yes, Wolfgang's theory is that Frederick the Great was basically an incel. Granted, Frederick did tend to not like many women, he still had some that he respected. But regardless, this was another theory that was purported. Hitler admired Frederick the Great as a statesman, and likely supported the incel theory or something similar, believing Frederick simply supported the state over romance. After all, Nazis violently suppressed homosexuality, and the idea of a great and important German statesman being gay went against their ideals. It took the discovery of several private letters and a discovery of an erotic love poem with very homoerotic undertones to spark modern historians to relook at this after the issue had been mostly ignored. With Voltaire's accounts, knowledge of several intimate people in Frederick the Great's life, and the work of more modern papers and research who I've been citing throughout this video, it is now at least in my view insane to think that he wasn't homosexual. But this brings up another question. Sure, not every historical figure needs to wear a rainbow flag to be gay or LGBT, but why isn't there a written work of Frederick saying something to the effect of, I am homosexual and I like men? Well, it's because homosexual was not a term that existed during Frederick the Great's time. People acknowledged there could be acts of intercourse between two men, but the idea that you had a sexual orientation at all just wasn't a concept yet, at least not in 1700s Prussia. This is why, for the longest time, gay people were viewed as deviants, because it was the act that was considered bad, and people wrongfully assumed that they were choosing to be attracted to men in doing the act, hence the usage of terms such as sodomites, which referred to any sort of intercourse that wasn't for having children with women. If you were arrested or persecuted for being gay, it was because you conducted the act and considered a criminal, not that you were a person who was wired to only love men. Homosexual and heterosexual weren't even coined as terms in any published works until 1869. There was even a theory at the time that said gay people weren't attracted to men, they were attracted by Uranians, which was a man who had the soul of a woman that was so attractive that the man inside the other person just couldn't help himself. And yes, this theory was also used to deny that Frederick wasn't gay, but rather so manly that he enjoyed Uranians. 
yes, this is a lot of gymnastics. Frederick the Great wouldn't say, I'm a gay man, because that's just not something gay people at this time would have said. Frederick the Great expressed his love and admiration for men through his writings, through the art he owned, and of course through the relationships and affairs he had. In conclusion, was Frederick II great? Well, he had flaws, but as a leader, overall, yes. Was he gay? I mean, I, I think that's kind of obvious at this point. I'm Ember Tiger Star, and I'll see you guys next time.